Good morning, everyone. I am uh, <clears throat> Sam Starks, one of the senior attorneys here at the Cochran Firm. And um, here with me this morning is Jane Lamberti, one of the partners at the Cochran Firm, and Ms. Sherry Strahan, who is our client. And we're here today to talk about a lawsuit that was filed on Friday in the state court of Gwinnett County. Uh, it is a lawsuit against a private entity called NAFCARE that provides correctional medical care and treatment to inmates at the Gwinnett County Jail. And some of you may remember that not very long ago, the Cochran firm filed a lawsuit against NAFCARE for the death of a young man at the Fulton County Jail. So this is now the second lawsuit that we have filed against NAFCARE and against its medical staff for not providing adequate medical care and treatment to inmates, which is a serious problem. A serious problem at the Gwinnett County Jail, a serious problem at the Fulton County Jail. So this is a lawsuit that is important not just because of the clients we represent, Ms. Strahan on behalf of her son as the administrator of the estate of her son, but also Dion Strahan uh, has a, a, an infant daughter uh, and this lawsuit is also filed on her behalf. But this is a lawsuit that certainly should cause concern to Gwinnett County officials that the medical provider that they have hired to provide care and treatment to their inmates, they are failing to do that. Uh, and they're failing to do that in a manner that is negligent and reckless and irresponsible. So this is a lawsuit that seeks justice and accountability for the death of Dion Strahan. He died because of the negligence of NAFCARE and its medical staff who failed to provide Dion with adequate medical care and treatment that could have been provided by taking him to the emergency room to get an evaluation and to get treatment. This lawsuit is a wrongful death lawsuit that seeks justice for Dion's infant daughter, Alea, who never got to see her father. She never got to meet her father. They never had an opportunity to spend any time together. She was born uh, shortly after Dion's death. So this is a lawsuit uh, on behalf of Alea, Dion's daughter, for the wrongful death of her father, who was 26 years old at the time he died. We are also seeking accountability on behalf of Dion's family and his estate, and on behalf of his mother, who you will hear from. She is entitled to answers. She's entitled to accountability. She's entitled to know how and why her son died from an ulcer. She's, she's demanding to know why was he not taken to the hospital. But she also wants to speak out and speak up against the problems that we know of at the Gwinnett County Jail which within the past year or so, that jail has had six or seven deaths, deaths that are under circumstances that show the inmates there are not being provided with adequate care and treatment. <clears throat> there was a GBI investigation into Dion's death where they interviewed jail officials, they interviewed staff from NAFCARE, they interviewed inmates. And one of the things that 
that investigation reveals is that Dion, during the time he was at the Gwinnett County Jail, he repeatedly and constantly complained about being sick, complained about abdominal problems. He repeatedly and constantly asked for medical treatment. And, and what you'll hear from Ms. Lamberti is that on the times he was taken to the medical unit, they failed to provide him with the adequate medical treatment that he needed. So we, we hope this lawsuit <clears throat> will, will not only hold NAFCARE and its doctors and nurses accountable for their failure to provide Dion with adequate medical care and treatment, but we also hope it will send a message to Gwinnett County officials who, as I said, they should be shocked and outraged uh, to hear or to read this lawsuit and to, to read and hear what our medical experts say could have been done, should have been done, and had it been done, Dion would be alive and here with us today. So <clears throat> this lawsuit, we think, raises serious questions and serious concerns about the competence and about the professionalism of NAFCARE, but also about the county officials who ultimately have oversight or should have oversight for any contractor that they hire to provide care and treatment uh, to their inmates. Jane. Okay, thanks, Sam. Good morning. So here's where I want to start, and I think it's really important to start right here. <clears throat> One x-ray to save a life. That's all it was. For four weeks, this gentleman complained consistently of symptoms consistent with an ulcer. He needed an x-ray to see what was going on. All they did was to keep treating him and treating him and treating him for the same thing, and he kept coming back. He hadn't gotten better. He needed an x-ray. And what he had was an ulcer, okay? And how do you get an ulcer? Ulcers are, we get ulcers. They're not a big deal, but they can be a big deal if you don't treat them for three weeks. We have acid in our stomach, okay? And that can cause little holes in the lining of our stomach or in the small intestine. His was right here at the, at the entrance between the stomach and the intestines. And it can cause in the breakdown in the lining. And the longer you don't treat it, the more time the acid gets in there and burns and eats away at the lining of the stomach. Also, we have bacteria in there called H. pylori. You have a little break, and then bacteria comes in and it eats away at the lining. And what happened here in this case is that it ate away to a blood vessel. The blood vessel burst and he bled to death. That's what happened in this case. And you know, it's important to know, well, well for, let's back up just a bit. What's happening today with the jail system in our country it is becoming a for-profit business. It is becoming a for-profit business where corporations like NAFCARE are making millions of dollars in providing health care to our inmates. Millions of dollars. Now this lawsuit just started. We don't know the exact amount the annual contract was with Gwinnett. We have another one going on right now in DeKalb County. We're suing NAFCARE again for Mr. Tooks. Fulton County was paying them $20 million a year, and they couldn't get a young person with acute chest pain two miles over to grave. Here we are again, a for-profit corporation making money, but not providing appropriate care. Think about it, just one x-ray. And another thing I, I, I want you to think about is in 
when you're incarcerated, when you're an inmate. It's a parent-child relationship, okay? It's not just doctor-patient, it's patient-child as well because that inmate, Mr. Strahan, he can't go anywhere he wants to get the care he wants. And should incarceration mean not only lack of freedom, but also lack of access to quality care? He had complaint after complaint after complaint. If he were outside seeing a provider, all they would have done is sent him for an x-ray. An x-ray, that's all he needed. But remember, it's like a parent-child relationship. They're the custodian, in addition to being the provider. They control the gate as to what kind of care he gets. And after repeated and repeated attempts, that didn't happen. And, I, and you know, it's in, it's in the complaint. I mean, from, from, from March 23rd to April 16th, he repeatedly complained. He saw a doctor, I think, two times. One time, um, the doctor just kept saying, keep monitoring him. And then approximately uh, six days before he died, he was seen by a doctor again. She gave him the antacid. She gave him the same medication he'd been getting for weeks. Did he feel better? Of course. He felt better for about eight hours. But that's what happens when you put um, neutralizing medication on, on acid. It feels better for a little bit. Did she do anything to get to the root of the problem for just a simple check spray? Absolutely not. And eight hours later, Mr. Strihan was back again on the 14th and on the 15th, complaining of abdominal pain. In his own words, the day before his died, help me please, I haven't gone to the bathroom in two weeks. This is what an ulcer also can do. And you know what they did? He was, he was there at 7 a.m. on the 15th, the morning before he died. Now, the same complaints for, for weeks. He was there 7 a.m. the morning before he died. Abdominal pain, five out of 10. He had chest pain also in an abnormal EKG, because what happens is when you have an ulcer, the pain, it's called refer pain, will radiate up and it'll feel like chest pain. He didn't see a doctor. He sat there all day on the, on the, on the 15th since 7 a.m. And the next morning he was found face down in a massive amount of blood because of that ulcer that's so easily treatable, ate through to a blood vessel, caused a massive hem hemorrhage and he bled to death. In 2023, anybody with reasonable access to health care should never die from this kind of ulcer. But this gentleman did not get reasonable care, not only once, not only twice, but for over three weeks. And what do we have? We found him face down in a massive amount of blood, hemorrhage from an ulcer that could have been easily treated, <clears throat> and he bled to death a 26-year-old young man. This has to stop. This needs to stop. And that's the purpose of these, these lawsuits. But I also want you to just introduce you to Ms. Strahan. She's Devon, Dion's mother, and she will speak from her own words how she feels. Okay. Good morning. I just... Um... I'm just so crushed by this whole thing, and I don't have answers. I don't understand, um, and I'm just, I want accountability, not um, for, well, for me, my granddaughter, and for others, because he wasn't the only one that this has happened to, and I just, I have questions. I, I'm unanswered questions, and I want accountability. My um, granddaughter, granddaughter never met her, her father. Um, it's... I just, um, excuse me, it's just, it's just a lot, but um, just so much lost. Um, my son, he had so, he was such a, a loving person, a loving person, um, just to see him, you know, smile, and he just brought joy to a room. He had so much to live for, and just to be taken away when it could have been prevented. Jane, do you want to take some questions? Sure. Ms. Strahan, if, they, if you have any questions for Ms. Strahan or for Sam, or me, we'd be happy to take any questions. Uh, what I want to say is 
Great. Sorry about your <coughs> like she said earlier, this is unfortunately happening all over the country. Can you just why was he there? That was the first question I have. Why was he in the Burnett County Jail? And there was um a s um a s self-defense um someone had um come to him and um pretty much attacked him at the residence that he was at and for self-defense and he was in there with COVID going on he never um you know saw a judge or anything and he was waiting to um to um you know see a judge and he was supposed to be released soon how long was he there he was he was there from the first part of november up until um, he died on April 16th. Where was he able to reach out to you? Yes, I talked to him all the time. And what was he saying? What was he telling you as both attorneys and you have just expressed? What was he saying? He was just telling me he did. He was in a lot of pain. He did. He felt um, he didn't feel good. At one point, I didn't hear from him for a week. So I went up there and just to find out if he, you know, was he still there? Why I hadn't heard from him? And then after a week later, he called and he told me he was so sick he couldn't even get out the um, he couldn't even get out the bed and he just laid in the bed. Um, he didn't eat or anything. He laid in the bed for a week. So he constantly complained about you know abdominal pain and that they weren't, you know, they weren't seeing him. A lot of times he went down and he, um, like um, um, she mentioned, um, he went, the day before he died, he called me and told me he was going, it was um, early and he was going to medical and then I didn't hear from him all day and then he called that night um, and said that he, he sat there all day and nobody saw him and that he was gonna um, see someone in the morning and um, someone knocked on my door and he, he ended up passing away at like 5 a.m. But he did, he constantly complained about the pain and not getting, um, you know, treatment. Had he had any prior, you know, health issues before that? No. Mm -mm. Yeah, oh. no idea that he had an ulcer. How old is your granddaughter? She'll be, um, she'll be two on June 11th of this year. And what do you tell her about your son, her father? that he even though he never met her he loved her that's all he talked about was um you know seeing his daughter and being there for her and you know being with her and um that's all he talked and just so we're clear i, I want to follow up on the question about why he was there i i understand the question but it has no relevance or bearing on whether or not they should have provided him with adequate medical care and treatment. When you're at a jail, that in essence means that you have not had a trial, you have not been found guilty of anything, otherwise you'd be at a prison. So when we talk about people who are at jails, we're talking about people who are waiting to go to court, waiting to go uh, to trial. So um, he was there uh, for, for, for several months, waiting to go to court, uh, innocent until proven guilty. Uh, could you ask, maybe this, answer this, because often we hear that people in these situations, first of all, need not have been based on the charges. Could you elaborate if that was something that maybe, you know, every county, every jurisdiction has their own measure, was he there maybe unnecessarily? <laughs> I can't speak to that as it relates to Dion's situation, but what I can say, and this is Sam Starks' view and opinion about this, I don't think it's a coincidence that in Gwinnett and in Fulton, where we have a disproportionate number of men of color uh, in these jails, uh, I do not think it's a coincidence, and, and I believe that part of this process that these, as Jane described, these for-profit corporations, part of their thinking about as it relates to these inmates, I, I don't think they see them as, as being human beings. I don't think they see them as their friends or their family members. I think they see them as people who they don't deserve any better. And, and, and that's unfair, that's illegal, that's, that's not how it works. When, did, when was he put in and when did he get back? Uh, my recollection is that he, he came into the jail the November before he, he passed away.
that following April. When did the ulcers start? Uh, Jane can address sure. that. Um, the symptoms began on March 23rd, and he complained of uh, abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting. And, you know, we don't have a problem with taking a little bit of time to see if the medication was working. But they kept applying the same medication, the same medication, without looking as to what's going inside. And folks, things like x-rays and CAT scans wouldn't be necessary if we can just look on the outside and know what's happening on the inside. These are basic routine tests that, again, a chest x-ray at any point, even as late as April 15th, his life could have been saved. And he had these complaints continuously from March 23rd through April 15th. And all they kept doing was putting a, a Band-Aid on something that needed a different type of intervention. Were you able to look at all the medical records? We, we don't know if we have all the medical records, but we have the medical records. And when you file a medical malpractice action in Georgia, you must have an expert within the same field of expertise alleging at least, alleging at least one act of negligence. We have two experts, both specialize in correctional facility medicine, uh, Dr. Bradbury, who's right here in Georgia, and he executed an affidavit saying this violated the standard of care. Absolutely violated the standard of care. And uh, the same with the nurse. This absolutely violated the standard of care. Were all injuries, the, the indication of the bleeding and everything, was all, all internal? Yes. Well, what happens is, is that it's internal, and that's what causes the pain and the increase. There's two things. One is that when the, you know, they give you some medicine that neutralizes the acid, but then when that wears off from more acid, it irritates the line again and eats even further. Okay? And then another thing that happens is when you get blood in places that it's not supposed to be, that could be irritating too. And so what happened in this case is that the, um, the, the artery going to the ulcer ruptured and the blood all accumulated in this gastrointestinal tract and you vomited out. So through the, through the process of his death, you know, he's got all this blood building up. He loses too much blood. It can interfere with, it could go down into his lungs, interfere with his ability to, to oxygenate, and he was found dead on the floor. Does that answer the question? During this process, was there, was there any indicators, like in his stool, was he throwing up? Yes, <clears throat> absolutely. You will look in our complaint. He's alleging nausea, vomiting, can't use the bathroom, um, abdominal pain, 5 out of 10, 5 out of 10. And they're, all they're doing is treating him for the symptoms and not looking for the underlying cause. And again, you have to think of the, the in an inmate situation as a parent-child relationship. This gentleman could not get care unless those doctors allowed him to. It's not like you or I, if we were going to a doctor and they constantly didn't do anything for the pain, well, we can walk into an emergency room. Or we can walk into another primary care center. No. He was stuck with a for-profit corporation who kept treating his symptoms the same way, not resolving them, and this resulted in a routine medical problem. Remember, this is an ulcer. This is an ulcer. People shouldn't be dying of an ulcer. This care is outrageous. A routine problem, hemorrhaging, leading to a death. Did he qualify for bond? Sam, do you know? Don't know the answer to that, but his criminal history would be on the docket. It would be public information if, if that were something that you were, were curious about. Is there for hearing? Uh, I'm not familiar with whether there was a there hearing, was hearing. Uh, as it relates to him being in custody. The, the information that we have, that I have, <clears throat> is that he was waiting for his court appearance. So other than in the first appearance where he's brought up in charge, that's been it, and that generally happens in that jail facility? Well, it depends. I mean, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But his criminal docket that would be still on the record in Gwinnett County would show uh, when he was taken into custody, why, what the pending charges were, and when his next court date was. Is there anything you care, care to offer about this uh, map care, um, their track record, anything? Well, their track record in Metro Atlanta is not very good. <laughs> 
Uh, we know that from our Fulton County case. We know that from this particular case. It's my understanding that NAFCARE has three contracts with jails in Metro Atlanta, but they are throughout the United States. If you Google NAFCARE, I think you will see lawsuits that have been filed against them. I recently saw on one of your local TV stations where the Department of Justice filed a lawsuit against NAFCARE for false billing, for billing them for treatment supposedly that they never actually provided to, uh, to the inmate. So again, it, it seems to me that Jane has touched on part of what, what we believe is the problem. If you are a for-profit business with the task and the responsibility to, to treat and care for these inmates, that could affect your incentive as it relates to providing them with adequate medical care and treatment. The county has an absolute duty to do it. It's the county's responsibility. They have hired this correctional medical provider to fulfill that duty, which is why I say the county should be shocked and outraged by what happened to Dion Strahan. Where does the responsibility lie in terms of the county and this medical uh, provider? Jane, do you want to? Well, my point is this with the county. If you're going to privatize it, just because you put it in the hands of a private company, you need to make sure that they're doing their job. And so ultimately, how many times do you keep selecting the same corporation? And I want to know, too, one of the things my um, paralegal uh, manager, Vicki Amos, found out in some research is, uh, just was it last week, Vicki? When was the? It was this year. There was a what? Twenty-four million. Yeah. A twenty-four million dollar verdict against NAFCARE in Washington State. It's systemic. It's systemic, and ultimately, if the if the county's going to privatize that care, then they should be looking at why they keep hiring the same corporation. Offhand, can you quickly recap who are the inmates uh, that are listed in the lawsuits? or Fulton and DeKalb? Tyree Tooks is the inmate from the Fulton County lawsuit against NAFCARE. It is a wrongful death case. And then for this case, Dion Strahan uh, is the decedent, the son of Ms. Strahan. That's Gwinnett. That's, that's the, that's the case we're DeKalb here. Earlier, right? The lawsuit is filed in De DeKalb, the Tooks lawsuit but it arises from the Fulton County Jail. So there's a Fulton County Jail NAFCARE case that we, we have, and then a Gwinnett County Jail NAFCARE case, both wrongful death when they could have taken these young men to the hospital, but didn't. And so the question is, why? You touched on a little bit the process of the inmate who gets sick, and then he has to see someone before you go to the doctor. Walk us through those, those steps. Sure. So. Um, I haven't seen the formal policies and procedures. Again, this is Jane Lamberti's opinion on how it happens based on the research that I've done, is ultimately you, you go in there, you're evaluated by a nurse, then she goes and raises the complaint up to the physician level, and then they just simply make a request. It's like getting a, a consultation to a gastroenterologist across the way. This patient needs to be transferred to the emergency room or this patient needs to be transferred for a GI consultation. And it can be as simple as getting a sheriff's car, putting him in the back of the sheriff's car and driving him over to the emergency room just like you would do for a friend. I have one last question for Mom. What are you hopeful for out of this suit uh, that you would like to see occur? I would like to see um, justice overall, like I say, not for just my son, but for others. You know, there are other mothers and family members that um, had to deal with this, and I, I think something needs to be done. There needs to be accountability and, um, you know, justice for my granddaughter, but um, overall for everyone because it's something that needs to stop. They, they need to have accountability and provide some answers as far as why this is happening. 
real quickly, can you just tell us about your son and how you would like to have him be remembered? Um, I would say, you know, full of life, full of joy, you know. He was, um, he was just a happy person and whatever he, he did, you know, he worked hard at it and um, he was looking forward to being a father, but he was just kind, a kind-hearted person that, um, you know, was there to, he lift people up. I didn't know until a lot of things that, um, that he did until his, you know, at the funeral, a lot of people came up and spoke and, you know, and said how they, they helped, he helped people with transportation and, you know, helped them when they needed money and encouraged them. So I just, I think he was, uh, I mean, I know that he was an encouraging person that loved people and loved to help people. Thank you, folks. Does he have siblings? No, he was my only child. <clears throat> we have some handouts. Thank you all for coming. We have some handouts for you in the back, copies of the lawsuit. Did you have any other questions? You good? Okay, great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you coming. So we appreciate it.